nobody's going to teach me this. Maybe I can teach myself this because if I don't, I shouldn't be in advertising for marketing because I don't understand this important thing. People buy for more for emotional reasons. There are two major studies that show that 90% of all decision making happens when you trigger the right side of the brain or the emotion side of the brain. Well, hi there and welcome. Today's guest is going to tell us how to trigger the right side, emotional side of the brain to boost the performance of our ads, our emails, our social media posts, and one-on-one presentations with the ultimate goal of achieving blockbuster sales. I'm Joan Possivy, your host of the Side Hustle Hero podcast, the show that is laser focused to inspire you to start or to scale your side hustle income streams. James I. Bond is one of America's leading behavioral management and business marketing specialists who, over the past 30 years, has worked with a who's who of American business, including Warren Buffett and Costco founder Saul Price. Drawing from his book, Brain Glue, James will be teaching us the steps to, and I quote, light the fire of desire in your buyer. (laughs) with lots of real world examples where these techniques have been used to jaw dropping success. But before we do that, I have a favor to ask. If you're enjoying what you're hearing in this podcast, I'd be so grateful if you would take a moment and leave a five star review at the platform where you're listening to let others know that there's valuable content here to help them start or grow their side hustle. Thank you so much. Now here is my conversation with Bond, James Bond author of Brain Glue. Welcome, James. Oh, thank you for having me, Joan. Well, so between you and me, did you change your name somewhere along the way as part of your marketing strategy? Or is that your birth name? Yes, my name was Fred Flintstone, but that wasn't going to work. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) No, no, I think my parents had a sense of humor, an evil sense of humor. I was actually born before the movies, but after the book. And so my middle initial is James I. Bond. I actually say that so people don't think it's just James Bond. If you put it in quotes, it's easier to find. Otherwise, you try to find me, it's you got to oh. go through all Sean Connery and all these other things who I love. You know? It's a but, blessing and a curse. Yeah, it's a blessing and a curse. So I had this uh, guy who was an investment banker named Jesse James. Is that a good name for a banker, Jesse James? He's a really? bank robber. You know? <laughs> and I called his office and I said, is Jesse in? And his assistant said, who's calling? I said, James Bond. She said, yeah, right, and hung up on me. I had to call back. She said, I'm so sorry, Mr. Bond. He's waiting for your call. You know, it's always fun when somebody's apologizing while they're laughing hysterically, you know? For sure. (laughs) It doesn't sound like you're sorry, but okay. Life is fun. Your book, Brain Glue, purports to teach us how to boost the selling power of our ads, emails, social media posts, and personal presentations. Now, that's something that any of us who want to expand our reach and increase revenues are very interested in learning how to do. So let's delve into that in a moment. But first, what led you to write the book? In Southern California, I created one of uh, California's leading behavioral management firms. And so I've always been fascinated by the concept of psychology. But this started in Montreal. I built an advertising agency. I have a technical background. I love logic and I love visual things, you know, if things are pretty and stuff like that. And uh, we ended up getting major clients, you know, some Kraft Foods, Timex watches, Avon Cosmetics, Abbott Laboratories, Seagram's, the world headquarters is in Montreal. So because of that and the context that we had, because of the work that we did, we had an opportunity to give back and to do the anti-drug campaign in America. Okay. And so we came up with this logical, I came up with this logical concept and they loved it. And then we saw what we lost to and it scared the heck out of me because it was fabulous. It was a guy holding an egg saying, this is your brain, and then cracking the shell and dropping it into a sizzling frying pan with really high sizzling sound. Yeah. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? And when I saw it, two things happened. The first one was I went like, oh, this is a gazillion times better than what I had came up with because mine was illogical. And the second one, this is emotional. This is emotional selling. And I have no clue how to do emotional selling. And it scared me. They don't teach emotional selling at school. I went to the library and there were like superficial things, but nobody teaches emotional selling. To speak to the impact of that, I remember that commercial very vividly. And how long ago was it? And it's too just long. Too brain. long. <laughs> well, okay. We won't get into that. But I mean, but the point is, so I'm old enough to remember Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of pail water. Of water. Okay. Now I heard that like 60 years ago. I'm old. Okay. On my deathbed, you can start saying Jack and Jill went, and I'll finish the phrase. It <laughs> sticks to the brain. Yeah. So what happened was I realized nobody's going to teach me this. Maybe I can teach myself this because if I don't, I shouldn't be in advertising for marketing because mm. I don't understand this important thing. People buy for more for emotional reasons. There are two major studies 
that show that 90% of all decision-making happens when you trigger the right side of the brain or the emotion side of the brain. Now, we focus on know, like, trust, okay? You probably heard that, know, like, trust. So if somebody knows you, likes you, and trusts you, they'll probably buy from you because it triggers the emotion side of the brain. But just counting on that doesn't work. And if you're running advertising or if you have a product, you want to put a name on it or something like that, it doesn't work because you're not there, right. okay? Unless you're famous, and, you know, I'm James Bond, you know, right? but that doesn't work because they don't trust me. Like, you don't look like Sean Connery <laughs> or whatever. So, so I realized, I said, let me figure out how to do this, okay? And it's going to take a long time. And by the way, I've done this for 35 years where I started this thing called a passion box. So it's really got a lot of stuff in it. But I said, let me start this, I'll create a box. And I'll call it the passion box, okay? Okay, like an actual physical box. Physical box, yeah, yeah okay. a real box. I mean, it's a box box, okay? Yeah. But I call it a passion box. As everybody in my house, my family knows that's dad's passion box. And every time, and so I wrote down your brain on drugs. And then I put it on a three by five card and I put it inside the box. And I said, I'm not going to overanalyze it yet because I don't understand enough about right brain selling or emotional selling. But what I'm going to do is every time I see something that's emotional selling or a phrase or a quote, like I'm old enough to remember President John F. Kennedy. And he said, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Yeah. Today, I know it's chiasmus. But back then I went like, wow, I don't know what that is, but I got to write that down and put it in the box. And I started putting things inside the box. And it was really, in fact, my wife hated going to uh, doctor's offices with me because I'd be reading through a magazine. I go, oh, wow, look at this ad. She said, do not tear it out of the magazine. I'm like, no, no, I have to. She would sit as far away as possible. I do not know that guy, okay? Right. And I tear it out of the magazine. I was at McDonald's and McDonald's said, would you like fries with that? And it was amazing. I didn't know this. On the front side, as customers, it shows a picture of fries and it says, like, French fries, would you like fries? On the back, it only has the words for the person at the cash. It says, would you like fries with that? And I'm like, wow, that's a great, you know, they don't need to see the picture. They just need to see the words. Right. And, so, and it triggers that. And so I go into you know, McDonald's and I say, can I have one of those? And they would go, well, we're not really allowed to give it to you. I said, well, don't you have an extra one? And they said, yeah, okay, fine. But So I have this. Is it like a, a card or something that was sitting on next to the cash yeah, register? It, it's attached to the cash register. So when people come up, they see when they're buying, they see a picture of French fries. On the other side, it's for the employee to read the That's words. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because they don't need the picture. And so I was like, whoa, you know, I didn't know you have words on the back to tell you what to tell us. That's really cool. But so I'm filling the passion box. As time went on, I had a lot of stuff in it. And when we moved to California, eventually I met John Gray. And John Gray was telling me how he wrote a book called Men, Women, and Relationships. Okay. And he was frustrated because it was it's a phenomenal book. It's mm. incredible. But he sold a few thousand copies, actually 20,000 copies, which isn't that much if you think about it. If you make a dollar a book, <laughs> I don't even know if he made that $20,000. You can't live on that. You better get another job. Right. But he was doing seminars to try to promote the book. And in one of the seminars... He said something, and all the women in the audience laughed hysterically, and all the men looked at the women and went, what's so funny about what he just said? And so one of the women said, huh, it's almost like men are from a different planet. And he says, yeah, I guess men are from Mars. Uh, and everybody laughed, men and women. Yeah, yeah. So when he got home, he was thinking, huh, men are from Mars. Where are women from? I guess women are from Venus, because Venus is the god of love. Okay. Huh. And he got this crazy idea. What happens if I change the title of my book from Men, Women, and Relationships to Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus? Guess what happened? Almost overnight, he sold half a million books, then a million, then two million. I have his, uh, you know, one of the guys that helped promote him. And I said in the book, I say, he sold 10 million books. He said, not true. He sold 50 million books. <laughs> Fred, 50 million. He went from 20,000 to 50 million just because he changed the title? I was just going to say, and just to be clear, the content is the same. The only difference he made is the title and probably Correct. The what he did was he put references to Men Are From Mars, Women From Venus in it, but he, it is yeah. the same book. Yes. It is the same. Yeah. It's a, if you had two books on the side by side, you go through them, you go like, oh yeah, look, it's the same thing, except this one, he refers to Men Are From Mars, Women From Venus while he's talking about this thing, but it's the same book. Okay. Wow. And you don't know what's in the book when you see the cover. So when people are in this, I remember in the store, I saw, you know, I'm looking at different books. I go, Men Are From Mars, Women From Venus? What? But it got me to pick it up. So the first act of buying the book is picking it up. Unless you're on Amazon, then you could just see it and you could say, oh, that's interesting. And so when I got back home, because this was so profound that he went from 20,000 to 50 million. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, like how many um, people are in America? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy impact. 
So I, I was going to put it in the book in my uh, passion box. And I said, wait a second, this is too important. So what I did was I said, let me start to analyze this. So I went to my bed and my bedspread was laid out. And I took all the stuff that's inside my passion box and I dumped it on my bed. And I said, let me group them together and see if they're groups. And I started to recognize like, Men are from Mars, women are from Venus is an analogy or a metaphor, okay? Men aren't really from Mars, but it's like that. And I started to recognize things like Shark Tank, the TV show Shark Tank. It's not a tank full of sharks. Right. I mean, it might feel like yeah, it yeah. if you're on the show. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah, yeah. they're going to attack me. But I mean, but it's it feels like a Shark Tank. And because it's called, I mean, if it was called the Investors Club, do you think as many people would fall in love with it as Shark Tank? No, there's something about the word Shark Tank, a metaphor that sticks to the brain. Yeah, I remember on the Discovery Channel, they were talking about um, Dreyer's ice cream and they launched Rocky Road ice cream. And so they launched it during the Great Depression. And back then they had chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Those are the only types of ice cream. So they said, let's mix things together. Let's take chocolate ice cream, put nuts in it, put marshmallows in it. What are we going to call it? They actually stole the name from somebody else. But they said, let's call it Rocky Road. Okay. And so when you buy Rocky Road ice cream, it isn't like you open up and you get a bunch of rocks. There's no rocks in Rocky Road. But they recognize it's bumpy and it's like bumpy like a Rocky Road. Yeah. It's a good name because it triggers different parts of the brain and you go like, oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. And Ben and Jerry's brought that to a whole new level. <laughs> Did they ever? They yeah. have like fantastic yeah. names. And yes. the names make you want to buy the product. You know, mm -hmm. it's just they're brilliant. Okay. Yeah. But so Rocky Road uses three brain glue, glue tools. The first one is uh, metaphor or, or, uh, or analogy, okay? Because it's not really a Rocky Road. The second one is Rocky Road uses alliteration, which is a repetition of sounds, R -r -r Rocky Road. And I started realizing, like, look at how many major brands use alliteration. Coca-Cola, okay. PayPal, TikTok, Best Buy, Lululemon. It sticks to the brain. And mm -hmm. so... And think of TikTok for a second, okay? If they call it the Chinese social media platform, you think as many people who use it as TikTok? No. Yeah. And so the name is really powerful. In fact, the Squatty Potty is a really good example of this. So it's a husband and wife in Utah who never has no, have no business experience. And then they're in the bathroom, and uh, she came up with this idea of like, you know, if I put my foot on a little stool, it changes the shape of my body, and it's easier to go to the bathroom. I don't want to get too okay. into that, okay? And wow, this is really great. And so people need this toilet stool. And they came up with the name Squatty Potty. My wife says they should have called it the stool stool, but I don't think that would have worked. Okay? Exactly. But if they call it the toilet stool, you think it would be a successful? They, in less than two years, they reached $100 million. They got on Shark Tank and, and there were people were lining up to invest with them because of the name Squatty Potty. Because So by the time they hit Shark Tank, they already had that name. Yes. Yeah. And so what happened was, it became an easy to sell because easy even to get investors involved because you hear, you know, they say squatty potty and it's there's rhyme it's alliteration and it uses the, a third thing that that Rocky Road uses which is humor if it makes you laugh at least a little bit squatty potty <laughs> that sounds yeah. funny what's that so Rocky Road ice cream was introduced during the Great Depression and the Great Depression was called a Rocky Road we're all on a Rocky Road so their mm. concept was we're on a Rocky Road we might as well eat Rocky Road ice cream which Perfect. is kind of funny you know yeah. But it's just, it's, I mean, there's some crazy ideas that people get that when you give it a name that really resonates and sticks to the brain, suddenly people want to buy it. I'll give you another example. So Paul Tran uh, invented a razor, an uh, electric razor for man's private areas. So he wanted a name that would be easily remembered, but that would also help people understand what the product does. So what do you think he called it? <laughs> What's that? The lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> and he went like from zero to like over a hundred million dollars. I mean, he just he, he blasted. Why? Because first people got what it was. Right. But second is what they did was they would laugh. People would laugh while they buy. You know, if you can get somebody yes. laughing, they're probably there's a good chance they're gonna buy your product or service anyway. Absolutely. You want to support them just for that. <laughs> exactly. But not only that, but you become a, a spokesperson for, hey, guess what I just bought? The lawnmower. <laughs> The lawnmower? What? To mow your lawn? No, to mow my personal lawn, you know? And it's just like, wow. And when you come up, you don't, it doesn't always have to be fun or funny, but if you can introduce that, it actually helps explode the yeah. product. I mean, it was um, Carrie Smith. And Carrie Smith had a small company that he, he started. And then he had a little money that he saved up. So he ended up buying another company. And the company made fans, very large fans that are used for farms. You know, if you have a bunch of cows in a barn, you're not going to have air conditioning. I mean, okay. yeah. you know, so you're going to put a, a fan in the barn and it's gonna, you want to go as big a fan as possible. Mm -hmm. And so that was the first market that they focused on that when he bought the product. 
and really big fans. He was trying to describe, how do we describe the fan, like what it is? And then one day he ran an ad and he said, you want to buy big ass fans? And we, just by calling it big ass fans, like nobody calls their product big ass anything. But for big ass fans, he ran the ad and suddenly sales shot through the roof. And he went, wait a second. What if I change the name of the company to big ass fans? The rest, as I say, is history with one exception. He starts selling fans like crazy. Okay. And this is a guy who had a tiny company. He just, you know, he started his company out of his garage or whatever, you know, but suddenly people are buying it like crazy and he could sell it to big companies, you know, like that want to have a warehouse or something like that. And it suddenly it became a huge success. Well, he, he was saying that he started getting distracted. He said, okay, so I make fans. What other products can I make? And he started making other products. And then he realized it's taking him away from the focus on fans because it's taking him away from the focus on fans. He needs to drop everything else. And he calls it really his logo is hilarious. It's got a, a donkey whose butt is facing you and his his head is turned to face you. Okay. okay. <laughs> and his big ass fans. Okay. So you get the <laughs> multiple meanings of it also. It kind of works well. Yeah. Okay. He sold his company after 15 years. A lot of people who start a company and are successful, mm -hmm. they're lucky to get almost any money for a company. He sold it for five hundred million dollars, a half a billion dollars. And nice. it's all he makes is fans, big ass fans. Not just any fans, big yeah, ass fans. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned your book in there and I understand initially it was called Sell More with a Right Brain Marketing Strategy. So it sounds like you applied basically what you were learning to your book title. I did the wrong thing. I'm lucky because I was introduced to Jack Canfield who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. Well, when he started reading my book and he got mad at me and I said, sorry, he said, no, I, could. I started reading a book. I couldn't put the damn things down. Well, sorry, but can I get a quote, you know? And he did, he see, you know, he gave me a really great quote. But he said also, my book was originally called Sell More with the Right Brain Marketing Strategy. I, I tortured everybody I know because everybody who loved the book couldn't remember the title of the book to start right. with. Yeah. That's yeah. the first thing. If you have a product, make it so that people can remember what the title is. Yeah. But he said, you are stupid. You're teaching us how to do right brain selling and you have a left brain title. It's a yeah. logical reason why. The whole book is about brain glue. Why did you just call the book brain glue? He said, I'll give you a quote if you change the title of the book. You know, and when you sell a book on Amazon, it's like you want lots of reviews because after you pass a certain point, suddenly you start getting their, their algorithm sees you and everything else. Yeah. He said, no, you got to change it. And he got me to change the book. And now people go like, oh yeah, brain glue. What's that? That's, you know, and then once they start hearing it, it sticks to the brain. Exactly. Because your original title, while descriptive, it doesn't pop. And of exactly. course, brain glue does. And I know when I started the idea of I'm going to write a book and I was laying out what the content was going to be. I thought really the first thing I'm going to do is come up with this amazing title. And then I'm going to create a mock-up of a book, put that on my desk and have a visual representation there while I'm writing the book. I couldn't come up with a title. And it occurred to me, it was Joan, if you don't start writing the book, there isn't going to be one. If you keep waiting for this right. fantastic men are from Mars, women are from Vetus title. And you know what, James, it was the last thing I came up with was the actual title. Mm -hmm. so my question to you is that how do people who are more skewed to left brain, analytical, number crunching, accountant type people, how do they actually do that? How do we come up? What are some tips or ideas you can give us with coming up with those alliterations and analogies, et cetera, for those titles that pop, whether that be for our social media or book or copy on a website? Well, the first thing is that the last thing you do should be the title, not the first thing, right. depending on what it is. At least conceptually have an idea, okay? Mm -hmm. I go back to Squatty Potty. They, she came up with the idea first of this product, and then she had to come up with the name. Yeah. Second is, you're a logical person. Most of us are logical. Come up with a logical description or title or description first. Do not fight it. Now you've got a clear description of what it is. Now when you do that, now you start applying brain glue tools. You, know, okay. you don't have to buy the book. Hopefully you do. Hopefully you buy the book. But no, even if you don't, you can go to Amazon. And just look at some of the topics. It, it, it actually tells you in the topics what the different tools are. And the first thing I would suggest you do is come up with an analogy or a metaphor. Analogies and metaphors are really, really powerful. And But be as crazy as possible. So answer this question. It's just like, bleh. And let me give you an example of okay, one that I did with this woman. So this mom says, you know, I've got like uh, my 14-year-old son asked me this question. Can you help me figure out how to answer it? You're the brain glue guy. I'm like, okay, you know, I don't know what they're going to throw at me. He says, he's 14 years old, and he says, why do we have to follow so many rules in life? So I went, okay, so let's start with this. What rhymes with rules? Fools. So only fools don't follow rules. Okay, there's something. I could start with that. 
but let me make it even stronger by coming up with an analogy or a metaphor. And so I came up with one, and I'll share with you what it was. I sat down with him and his mom, and I said, so you were telling your mom, you know, you're asking your mom, why do we have to follow so many rules in life, right? And he said, yeah. I said, well, you know, when you're thirsty, you could drink out of the toilet, but why would you ever want to? Remember, only fools don't follow rules. And mm-hmm. he says to me, hmm, that makes sense. Okay. First, when do you ever get a 14-year-old saying anything makes sense? I want <laughs> right. to know that. It was like I was ready to escape in case he asked me another question. But the second thing was, does it really make sense or did I just trigger things in his brain? So here are two political statements. And I don't want to get into politics. I'm not for or against these things or anything else. But I just want you to understand how this applies. And people apply this who really understand these concepts. Sure. You can't hug a child with nuclear arms. Mm. That resonates with a lot of people because yeah. you t- hug a child. Well, that's emotional. With mm-hmm. nuclear arms, ugh, you're putting those two things together. So you can't hug a child with nuclear arms. How about this one? And again, I'm not for or against this one, okay, with guns and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, I heard a comedian say, the right to bear arms is almost as crazy as the right to arm bears. And it's just like, whoa, it resonates right. even though it's not yeah, yeah. logical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I'm just wondering how we can actually come up with those. So I guess one way you alert, alluded to it was with rhymes. So put down one of your key words and write everything down that rhymes with that word. Yes, but I would always start with a metaphor, come up with the craziest metaphor of all. It may not be the thing you're going to use, but I mean, mm-hmm. remember the guy who had the, the lawnmower. I mean, right. that was a metaphor. Who came up with it? He probably laughed and started telling his friends and everything else. And he finally said, huh, I wonder if I call my product that, you know? And so the first thing you want to come up with is the craziest out-of-the-box metaphor you can. And just finish the sentence. It's just like we had a behavioral management firm, okay? I ran for 13 years in Southern California. And then we used powerful tools and everything else. But as we would describe it, because we're left brain people, it would go over their head. It would go in one ear, out the other. And so we came up with the metaphor. And we said, we're just like a personal trainer. You know, we do more than this. But we're just like a personal trainer or personal coach shows up at your house and gets you to do you know, more push-ups than you would ever do on your own. We get your senior people tackling bigger projects than they would ever do on their own. So I guess to get to that point, maybe then it's a matter of writing down or listing down all the benefits of your product or service, and then thinking of what other product or industry also does that. Yes. It doesn't have to be a product or industry. It could be something crazy, like some guys, like a, a guy who gets shot out of a cannon at a at a, at a <laughs> right. circus, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. come up with the crazy, you know, don't stop yourself. Don't just come up with more and more crazy ideas. And that's the first thing. The second thing is then you start thinking of rhyme words that rhyme with what you're focusing on. So brain glue, it lights the fire of desire in your buyer. How about <laughs> this one? Okay. I'm going to say I cheated on this one because I went to um, chat GPT. Yes. You know, a lot of people hate it, but it was like, I said, hey, what do you have? And I came up with some, and you keep saying, can you make it funny or whatever else? And it said, why brain glue? Because plain glue doesn't stick to the brain. It was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, by the way, I had like 30 examples that were stupid, but I had this one. I was like, whoa, that's not bad. I'm heavily involved in Rotary. It's an international service organization. And uh, I was asked to step in to do a couple of roles, one meeting for someone that was away. And part of that was coming up with a joke. Uh-huh. And uh, so I turned to chat GPT for this. And this was in the early stages when this was first released, the chat uh-huh. GPT. And it started, I think the first joke was something like, um, so a horse walks into the bar and the bartender says, why the long face? And I'm like, no, 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 they're going to groan at that one. And it kept going back in the dialogue, like you were saying. And by the time I got to the end, it did come up with a pretty couple of funny jokes. But the funniest part was just the dialogue back and forth. And that's what I ended up using and reading at Rotary. The final joke was okay, but the dialogue was hilarious. Well, one of the tools of brain glue is humor. Humor triggers oxytocin in the bloodstream, which actually makes people more willing to say yes to your product or service. You know, the opposite of oxytocin is cortisol. And cortisol, if you get really pissed off or really scared, cortisol gets triggered into your bloodstream and stays there for up to 36 hours. So if you have somebody who yesterday you know, had something terrible happen to them where they got scared or their wife or their husband is going through a divorce or something, try to sell them anything and watch how hard it is. But if you tell them a joke, it actually wakes up the brains. Brain glue has jokes. Can I give you a couple of jokes? Sure, maybe I can use them and pass them along for Okay. (laughs) Well, there's something called chiasmus, which is the opposite of rhyme. Okay, rhyme is A-B-A-B, okay? Rhyme is, uh, chiasmus is A-B-B-A. It's like, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. It flips. Okay. Winners never quit and quitters never win. 
President Kennedy used it. He also said, mankind must put an end to war or war will put an end to mankind. And he mm. sticks in a brain. Yeah. Malcolm X said, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. The rock landed on us. Wow. Okay. And that's, it sticks to the brain. It's more than, you have no idea what we go through as blacks in America. He also yeah. said, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. And they really resonate with us. On the opposite end of that, I understand there are trigger words that set people off and sabotage our persuasion efforts. Tell us about those and, and maybe give us some guidance there. Okay, so how about this one? So Wonder Bread invented sliced bread back in the day. So when people say, wow, that's a, the greatest invention since sliced bread, they're referring to Wonder Bread. And Wonder Bread bleached their bread so it would be white. Oh, man. And there was an illness that they had back then. It was just similar to COVID that we've had called pellagra. Okay. And pellagra was the absence of vitamin B3. You know, we right now they use, um, anyway, they fortify foods and put it in niacin. And niacin is the, has vitamin B3. Okay. But so they discovered that if you have an absence of uh, vitamin B3, there's a greater chance that you're going to get pellagra. So their competitors came up with the phrase and they, were, they started telling newspapers back then and uh, some of the media like radio, and they would repeat it over and over and over again because it was brain glue. It, tr it stuck to their brain. And it was the whiter your bread, the quicker you're dead. Mm. And it literally wow. threw Wonder Bread from the, they were dominant for 10 years. They almost went bankrupt. Literally almost everybody stopped eating Wonder Bread. Now they started, they invented fortified food. They started putting lime, niacin and vitamins and minerals in it. And then suddenly they would start promoting it that way. And then, so suddenly that didn't apply and they sort of came back. They never dominated like they dominated initially. Right. But you know. That's where really understanding your customer comes in as well, because some demographics word would be the perfect fit and others it's going to be a turnoff yeah exactly but that's why so we're talking to high side hustle people you guys and gals out there you're going to get inspired to create a product or service okay or some something that's really cool you want to become massively successful with it and actually move forward with it come up with a really awesome name mm -hmm. and or just way to describe it well that's why i wanted to pick your brain about the how to's because we all know that the catchy title is what we need, whether that's in our copy or in our social media or in our, our title of a book or a blog. We know we have to do it, but how? Start with an analogy. I always want to start there. But then also make a shopping list of all the words that relate to your product. I want to give you an example because to me, this is a profound example. You remember the Got Milk campaign? Was that the one with the milk mustache? Milk mustache, Got okay. Milk and all that stuff. Got Milk. And people think that was a fantastic campaign. I have two books. One is Got Milk and the Milk Mustache book. One of my daughters has one of the posters from uh, Milk Mustache. Got Milk campaign. Here's an article in Business Week over 10 years ago, and it said, Got Milked. After $385 million, sales still continue to decline for milk. It never helped people buy milk. Why? Because it's not giving you a reason to buy milk. You know, people used to buy milk because it has calcium in it. It's going to strengthen your bones. Get in and they recognize you can get calcium from all kinds of things. Spinach has calcium in it. Okay, so that's the first thing. And then the second thing was a lot of people have lactose intolerance, you know, where they drink milk and it makes them feel sick or upsets their stomach and they don't realize it. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't have that lactose intolerance, but they believe they do because somebody talked about lactose intolerance. I'm one of those. And so if somebody has lactose intolerance and you say, got milk, are they going to buy milk suddenly? No, because you're not giving them a reason to buy milk. But if you focus on something that says, you know, you got strong bones, <laughs> there's a Something in milk that you don't get in other calcium things that strengthens your bones. So if you're an athlete, ta -da, you got to have, if you don't drink milk, you're crazy. Now I'm giving them a reason why they should drink milk. Right. And so you want to attract attention, trigger the emotion side of the brain, but you want to trigger it in a way that helps people understand why they should buy your product or service. What's so good about it? You know, Holiday Inn's, but people don't realize it. There was actually a movie at the time called Holiday Inn with uh, Fred Astaire and uh, Bing Crosby that was massively popular and famous. Okay. So when uh, Kevin's Wilson came up with a uh, hotel, and he wanted to create it as a chain. So he wanted to come up with a name. He was thinking and thinking. He said, well, everybody loves the name Holiday Inn. Why don't I call it Holiday Inn? You know? Perfect. That's as they say is history. <laughs> yeah. You're picking something that's already in the brain. And then the second thing is there are patterns that the brain likes. And if you can use a pattern like rhyme or like uh, alliteration or things like that, that's a pattern the brain likes. Like side hustle hero. There he's like side <laughs> hustle hero. And you've got hustle hero and side hustle. I mean, it's just a, what a perfect name. You know, it says what it is, but it also has the word hero, which makes you emotional. Mm -hmm. it's just it's so powerful. So you recognize it's like that, that people become passionate. You want people to become passionate about your product. You have to trigger the passion parts of the brain. 
Yeah. And so we all want people to be passionate, don't we? This uh, this this woman, and she's a stay at home mom who came up with a Facebook page. She wanted to, to connect with all these other women who are stay at home moms. And so she came up with a name that was so powerful. I'll tell you what the name was. Mommy needs what? Mommy needs time to herself. Okay. Mommy needs, you know, some extra energy. Oh, I know what mommy needs. Mommy needs vodka. She came up with the, the page that's called Mommy Needs Vodka. She has 5 million fans, wow. okay, with zero marketing. And she's got 5 million fans. I remember how I became a fan because I'm looking at it. She had a funny joke that she put on. I don't know if it was hers or she was just forwarding it or whatever else. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, huh, that's pretty funny. And I, I looked at who it is. Mommy needs vodka. Mommy needs vodka. <laughs> I gotta check your that attention. Out. I that on. What sort of thing? Exactly. It, it woke up my brain. It yeah. was so I wasn't just looking at this post. But I was looking at this post and going like, "This is from Mommy needs vodka." What's that all about? It sounds cool. And I went to it, and suddenly I looked at some of her other posts, and I, you got me hooked. Yeah. And it's because it triggers the brain. Yeah, absolutely. And to wrap up this, in my books, anybody that has the bravery to start a side hustle is a hero in my books. Side hustle heroes change the world. I mean, mm -hmm. Steve Jobs was a side hustle here. I mean, it's inspiring. First, it's inspiring to you. It's inspiring to your family. It's inspiring to all the people you know, except for some of the people that are pissed off because you make more money than them, but big deal, okay? But I mean, it helps you survive. It helps you not get pushed around by your boss. If you have a boss that you don't like, or maybe a boss that you do like, it's fine, you know? But it's just, you stop being a prisoner. Yeah, it's freedom. Major fan of side hustle and side hustle hero. They're just, it's fantastic. And Side Hustle Hero, I think is, you rock. <laughs> Thank you. Well, what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you, James? Well, the best way is, because this will connect to me and to Brain Glue, is go to braingluebook.com. Okay. And that'll take you to Amazon. And then you can read. Amazon lets you read some of the stuff for free, which is really good. And there's also, which I want to suggest everyone do this, is we have an audio book and there's a sample there. And we have a really, I think it's hilarious, audio sample of how somebody used brain glue and what they came up with. Eventually they had that, they tripled their sales and then they apologized to their audience. Sorry, we didn't think we we're gonna offend you. Yeah, right, you know, but it's, it's a fun one. But yeah, if you go to braingluebook.com, you won't have to work and look for the book. It'll take you right to Amazon. You can just play with that, some of that. Great. What's your best piece of advice for someone wanting to start or scale their side hustle? One top tip. You want to understand that when you get a great idea, you want to surround yourself with other people that are, that are helping you and motivating you. One of the most common things you, people are going to have is they're going to come up with this great idea and people are going to say, yeah, that's stupid <laughs> or whatever else. I mean, the squatty potty, you know, what a stupid idea. Anyone can have a stool. That's a crazy name. Yeah. Do not be turned off by people, you know, when you have ideas. You need to surround yourself or at least give yourself access to people that will motivate you. And when you do that, your side hustle will become like massively successful and fun. Big ass fan. Do you think he wasn't <laughs> laughing every time he sold one of those things? You know? Who you find yourself surrounded by is so important to your future success and where you're going. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Well, thank you so much, James, for giving us some really valuable insight as to how we can boost our selling power in our ads and our emails and our social media. And uh, so I really appreciate you being today's Side Hustle Hero. Joan, thank you very much for having me. Lots of fun. Are you ready to rethink some of your product names, taglines, or maybe you're searching for a new company name? Here's a recap of the steps James shared to boost their effectiveness and make them more sticky with your prospects. Number one, come up with the craziest out of the box analogy or metaphor by finishing this sentence. It's just like, and then fill in the blank. He suggests picking the craziest ideas and to do this exercise over a period of days, not just five minutes. Number two, start with a logical title or description, like his original book title, Sell More with a Right Brain Marketing Strategy. It was very descriptive. Number three, come up with words that rhyme with all the words that describe your product or service or book. By going through this process with brain glue, one of the words he started with was desire. And he landed on, we light the fire of desire in your buyer. And number four, humor. James suggests that laughter makes you more creative. And if you can get someone laughing, they're likely to be more receptive to buying your product or service. I'm going to add a number five. And that is to brainstorm with others whom you trust and you feel could contribute to these four steps. 
you're coming at this exercise through your own lens created by your unique combination of knowledge and interests and experiences. You might be too close to it. Remember, James mentioned John Gray's book was originally titled Men, Women, and Relationships until an interaction with an audience member prompted Gray to say off the cuff, well, I guess men are from Mars. And everyone laughed. He went from selling 20,000 copies to 50 million, largely just by changing the title. This is powerful stuff. Well, that's a wrap for today. You'll find a link to James's book at our website, sidehustlehero.com. If you enjoyed this episode, let me know you're listening and tell me how this podcast is helping you. You can tag me or send a DM on Instagram at Joan Possibly. Thanks for listening and hustle on.